Uh, come on. Okay, so hope that's working. Uh, yes, sir. Perfect. Thank you. I, I need to hear a confirmation I'm actually alive and working. Otherwise, I don't know where I am. <laughs> uh, so, so last week, somebody asked me about more details on how I do those truss rods. So I backed up over myself, which was painful. Uh, I got out of the car and backed up over myself. Uh, but I built another car just to show how I do this in detail. So we're going to start at the very beginning of how I do, do these crazy things. There's our starting point. It's a pile of wood. There's the list of pieces. There's, so I'm building, an, I'm building an O scale, but I'm actually using HO lumber. I don't care what scale the lumber is in. It's, if it measures out or feels right or looks right to be what I want to do, that's the right piece of wood for the job. So this is HO 12 by 22 and 10 by 22 for the frame of the flat. This is going to be a flat car, basically. You've got uh, dimensional lumber for needle beams, some brass wire. That came from uh, Clover House. The resin bolsters are my own, a tri cast. And they're not drilled and tapped for 440 yet in this picture, but that's what I normally do somewhere along the way before I mount them. Always good to drill and tap them before you put them into the car. It makes it a lot easier than drilling a hole through the car. And I decked this car. I pulled out, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, I had some of this red cedar. It's O scale 2 by 10 in red cedar. And it actually does smell pretty good. I was surprised. It's it's older than, you know, I don't know how old it is, but it still has a fairly decent aroma to it. So there's what you do. Basically, you're building a box. And, you know, this is the 12 by 22 all the way around. This is two layers of the 2 by 10 red cedar offset by the width of the half the width of a board. So it's actually double decked to give it good strength. You can see it's not quite that straight some places. So actually double decking, it helps a lot, unless you really want it to look kind of rough and rustic. In this case, I didn't really care one way or the other because I just want, I'm just building this car for demonstration purposes. Okay, I actually measured something. This is scary. You might want to take note. I measured something and I'm admitting to it. Uh, got out the ruler. I found, this is important, the middle of the car. And these two marks right here happen to coincide with where the screws go for a KD coupler box. So thinking ahead, you're going to have to mount a coupler to this car somehow. So that's actually tells me where the two inner beams go, because then I can screw a coupler box to it. Not quite, this was like, I don't know, 29 and a half millimeters or something like that. I actually measured it in millimeters. So, these two beams go in first. I mark these after I've bent the uh, brass wire. You drill a hole with, I drill with a hand drill at an angle. Uh, thread that through these two boards and glue them in, keeping all three pieces in alignment at the same time. And you only have two hands, so it makes it a lot of fun and, and an exciting, exciting moment trying to get everything lined up on those two marks at each end and get this wire, which is flopping around all over the place at the same time. But it's doable. And this is the other two boards, the uh, 10 by 22 right here. on, And it just split the difference here on the spacing. Now, here's where it gets fun. We get the uh, bolsters in. We get the needle beams in. And I got all these red arrows. The red arrows are how the truss rods get threaded through. And I'm going to use number zero silk, surgical silk. And we're going to go in one end, under the, under the bolster, up over the needle beam, back down, under the bolster, out the end, up again, through the end, under again, up and over, 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 down, under the bolster, out the back end, and up to the next space. Repeat process, repeat process. Is that totally confusing or not? I hope not. So, here are the rest of the fiddly bits and bobs and the silk thread. Grant line, nut bolt washers, these are number 81s. They're down here. 
10 inch queen post grant line number 70s. Turnbuckles from Tishi number 2004 down here. Here's your silk thread on a nice wooden spool, size zero. I don't know what the code 8, A-56 stands for, don't care. It's black, it's braided silk. You can't break this stuff. You try to break this between your hands, you're gonna cut yourself down to the bone. It's virtually impossible to break. It's, it's braided over another silk core. It's um, incredibly difficult stuff, strong. And these are just Dixie, little Dixie cups, medicine style cups. I just cut them down to be about a half an inch high. I have about 10 or 15 of these in my shop at any given moment, just holding little parts and pieces so I can find them fast during a build. I pre-cut things. Uh, another tip here, all of these are cut off the sprue with a very sharp bevel. That bevel makes it possible to go into the hole a lot easier. If you cut it straight and flat, it's hard to push it through a hole. Cut it on a bevel, you can grab it, it'll slide into the hole a lot more smoothly. Okay, drilling holes. Number 35 drill for the uh, 10 inch queen posts. You can see where they're located here, here and here. Number 55 for the uh, number 81 nut bolt washer casting. It's a pretty good size drill. So I'm using a hand drill. Uh, I can use a hand drill here or my dr little tiny drill press or a Dremel, doesn't matter here, or even a, a pin vise. But, you know, I'm gonna cut all these parts again, cut from the sprue with a sharp bevel. It's actually pretty key to making things slide into a hole nice and smoothly. Uh, this is a small hand drill. I use it all the time, but then again, it's O scale. I can get away with large tools. And here's how you start. Oh, okay, so first tip, this uh, silk thread, the, all the way at the very end, other end of it. The first half inch of it, paint it with a, just a little bit of CA and let it dry. That'll keep it from fraying, that'll keep it nice and stiff, that'll make it something you can handle, passing it through the holes and not making a mess. So the other end went through here, all the way through underneath this bolster until I had about, I don't know, about three, three quarters of an inch left over. And you grab a nut bolt washer casting with the tweezers, a drop of CA, and you push it in the hole right on top of, right next to the, the silk thread. And it usually goes through fairly easily. Now, point of caution, I probably should be using a slightly, the next size down drill, probably should be using a 56 instead of 55, but that does make it a lot harder to put it in. There's a lot less free space there with that silk thread in the way. But you're counting on that to hold that silk thread right where you want it the whole time. And if you use a different size casting on the end, you're gonna to have to measure what that sprue bolt size is and you know, tune the uh, drill bit to the right size. So if it's smaller, you're gonna need a smaller drill bit. If it's larger, you're gonna need a larger drill bit, but you don't wanna be more than a few thousandths off because you really wanna compress and hold this thread very tightly because you're gonna put it under tension. It's actually gonna be under real tension. So first, we've come from the other end, gone back through, put two nut bolt and washers in. There's a, and as we came back, came through, we put a turnbuckle on. Don't forget to put the turnbuckle on as you go through. They're no fun putting on later. Cutting apart a styrene turnbuckle and gluing it back together on the silk thread is doable done it three times. I don't want to do it a fourth if I can help it. Uh, it's, it's annoying. So this is second time we're going through. We've gone through one end. We've come back the second time through. Now we're going through the third time. You can see the pattern on the end. Another nut bolt washer casting holds it all through. And as you pull it through, that's over and under and over again and under again and out the backside. You're pulling it with a lot of tension, as much tension as you can put on it without cutting your hand with the silk thread. And while you're holding it under tension, you're slapping one of these nut bolt washers castings into that hole on a tweezer, with, holding it with a pair of tweezers with a drop of CA on it. 
So you only need three or four hands to do this, but it, I, I assure you it's completely doable. Okay, so third time through, we get the different pattern passage through. You can see the silk thread. It's been through three times. We're going through the fourth time. And if you come through the fourth time, you got a little leftover thread. And I actually probably put 20% extra thread because extra thread beats not having enough thread 100% of the time. Too little, you can't fix it. Too much, you can always trim it off later. It won't hurt. So everything's anchored. We let it all the CA dry. This is what it looks like underneath. So we're in one side, under, over, under, out, back in, under, over, under, back out. Same process four times. Okay, so you could do this with four separate pieces of silk thread. But I don't think you can get anywhere near as much tension on it by pulling each one individually stiff and tight. So I'm actually pulling this through. So it's anchored here, but I'll go through two ends and pull it th through the other end and pull it tight two passages through and then I'll add the nut bolt and washers two at a time. So I actually have this under a fair amount of tension. So the next step is, okay, so you center your tartan buckles, bring them into wherever they were. Usually they're all scattered all over the place and put them somewhere in the middle, line them up where you want them, a little drop of CA on it holds them in place. After you've picked up the silk thread and dropped it onto the queen post cups very gently and carefully, it's not gonna go anywhere after you do this. You can put CA here to hold it or not. It's not gonna go anywhere. It's gonna be very tight. It's gonna be under real tension. Hey, Martin, quick question. Uh, where do you get the silk thread? Ah, uh, I get it out of the trash can where I used to work 20 years ago. Uh, <laughs> That's not helpful. <laughs> I know. Uh, you, can, you can actually buy silk suture thread on Amazon and on eBay. It's, it's available. And actually, I've seen the exact same stuff I use. And it may seem like it's a lot of money, but I think there's 100 yards on a spool. 100 yards will build a lot of cars. I mean, uh, now what, what size uh, can you get the same size for HO? Uh, well, the zero is pretty small, actually. But I don't think you can, I guess you can get a double zero or a triple zero. I've never seen it, but I've never looked for it. Gotcha. Thank you. So you could use, but you could use like you could use like a carpet thread or something that's that's got some strength to it as well. I'm sorry to interrupt, Ryan, but will it be available in no gauge? Well, that's what this is. So oh, okay. So we're available it, in O scale. It's available. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, yeah. So it, it's it's yeah. I, I work in O scale almost exclusively. That's great. So this is uh, fairly straightforward in that sense. And actually they make, I actually have the number one and number two thread. I've never used, I don't think I've ever used the number two. I've used the number one occasionally, but I've kind of settled on the zero for, for foreseeable future. And if you really, really, really want some, you can contact me and I'll send you a foot or three. Uh, all you got to do is cover my postage. So that's what it looks like at the end. Final step. You get out your scalpel blade. I use a number 10 or a number 15. And just, you can see just a shred of black there. Here's the other one right here. And I'm just lining up right against the washer. Scalpel blade down, scalpel blade down. You can see it just touching the wood a little bit right there. It snips it right off. You might have to, cause a little CA might leach into it, but you may have to just lift underneath of it. It'll pop right off. Nice and clean. So there's your end of your car, and you can do whatever you want with it from that point. Uh, you can move these around a little bit. You can add all kinds of other details. I usually space these out a little better so I can put a pair of grab irons in between them. Okay, so we're going to stop right there. But I'm going to, uh, Jim raised an interesting point about old kits. And I'm, I, have two, I have two old kits in front of me, and I don't know which one I'm going to do. I have a train craft. Well, I gotta put my glasses on for this. Kit number 503. I believe that is some sort of caboose. And when I say some sort, 
That's exactly what I mean. It'll be something odd and unusual knowing it's a train craft kit. Uh, I, as near as I know, this one looks almost unopened until I just opened it, despite being probably uh, 10 or 20 years older than me. The other kit I have on my desk here is one I just opened up. It's something I've never seen before. It's a Vans car shop O-gauge kit for an 1890 postal car. I have no idea if it's complete or not. And I don't know how much pain and suffering will be involved in building it, but I suspect that's what I'll be going with just for the, uh, the aggravation and, and uh, irritation that comes with it. You know, it's O scale. Uh, first, you have to suffer. All right, so you're gonna build then for that old kit building, remembering the old kits, you're gonna build Van Car Shop's model of an 1890 postal car. Yeah, I'll send you a note or three. Act okay. well, give me a chance to confirm that it might actually all be there or, mo or enough of it's there that it won't be totally heinous. Well, you're gonna be scratch building it probably anyway. I hope not, but that'll, that'll be more fun anyhow. Okay, okay. so anybody, anybody got any, any other questions while we're here? Got a lot of nothing, okay.